And the challenge today is you can't make it better because the people that took the positions won't let them go. Many of them have actually t seized enough economic might that they can fight you pretty good. Um, the war of ideas, I think Epido mentioned earlier, is a tough one to fight when you don't have a mouthpiece. You have no conduit to communicate another way. The media won't do it. This conversation right now will never be seen or heard anywhere. Um, this debate among opportunities and ideas will never resonate in the public because it's naive. People see the world differently than we do. We, I believe, can inspire our people back home to create the nation that we believed was possible. The problem is, how do you do it when you don't have a leadership that buys in? They have every motivation to the country. And I think if you think about institutionally, how, how do you do that? NAC has been silently, quietly, deliberately doing it the way, only way you can. Or the only way you can without putting yourself at war with your own people. Because NAC could be a voice box in Washington yelling about Albania's failures and Kosovo's failures and joining all of Kosovo and Albania's enemies in undoing it. Or we could say, look, slowly, we build through the Hope Fellowship Program new leaders. We built through various uh, internship programs, new leaders in Mont Montenegro. We opened up offices to enlighten youth groups. We opened up media programs as best we can. As role models, we all try to go to these places and say, look guys, it could be different. It doesn't have to be like this. And I think if we can all find ways in which we can all become part of that message, we'll make a big difference. But I think we need to be realistic about what it is that our problems are before we say NAC can do it. NAC has very limited resources. You're asking NAC to fight the international enemies of, of, of our people back home. You're also, by the way, faced at a time when the Albanian American diaspora itself has changed dramatically. I mean, who we are as a people in this country is vastly different than we were 10, 20 years ago. And we have to acknowledge that too, because that concentration of energy that existed you know, in the last generation, or in our generation, if you will, may not exist in our children's generation. So we better have better ideas to keep them interested and engaged. And by the way, caring enough to want to learn their language, even go visit at all, let alone sacrifice and give money and do anything for them. So if you play out the parallel paths that we're on, we are probably at the most critical time that the Albanian people have ever faced in history, ever. We are in danger of completely being radicalized, of being eradicated by ourselves. Because if this all happens the way it's happening, the relative investments that are happening, the kinds of approaches that are being taken, the strategies that are being you know, executed upon, we will not have an identity to worry about. Because we will be part of other nations and other continents and other things. And within a generation or two, there will be no, nothing more to worry about. And I don't know if that matters. Because in the end, there, there is a point of view that says, you know what, globalization is real. And small nations and small people and small voices and small identities will be disappearing. That's a fact. The question is, what are the Albanian people going to do about their own state of affairs? And I don't hear that topic of conversation in discussion in any of our institutions back home. I don't hear it really lively discussed among our players here because we do get caught up. We, we very much reflect our institutions back home. When they're fighting about nothing, we're talking in the coffee shops and fighting about nothing. Too. Uh, when we're talking about major issues, about economic and other disparity, the fact of the matter is 80-90% of our community just doesn't get it and mostly doesn't care. And that allows the very small minority of our community to profit in. So small groups of people make things happen, do things, give up things, sell things, you know, vote another direction, look the other way while somebody takes the entire coastline of Montenegro or whatever the issues are. Um, it's easy to look at that. It's too easy to say, I don't want to get involved. I can't tell you how many thousands and thousands of hours of time you know, the people that are in this room have spent free of charge, paying their own way, paying against our own people and institutions in many cases uh, to achieve goals that we thought were worthwhile. These were not mass opinions. I can tell you that if you polled the Albanian diaspora today in the United States about what they think about any particular issue, they won't know how to answer these questions. Because we have no means of communicating with most of them. However, if you throw a party, but we got to be proud of that because it is the one thing you, you mentioned, you were the only one who talked about it tonight, it is the one thing that has kept our community talking about it, which is music, art, dance, 
It's kept people coming together. Even when there's been divisions, that kept everybody together. And sports is the other one. Um, we have to, as a community in this country, I think, get back together and say, okay, what's our new target? Okay? We have countries that represent us often. I am so embarrassed when I watch a movie like Taken, where the only Albanians that represent in the Hollywood film are people that rape and steal and drug and, and destroy and murder and kill. That, my friend, is not an image I'm comfortable with my children raping, you know, rising up to, uh, to talk about. And by the way, it happens. And when you don't have a prime minister or a president of a country that says, you know what, I am ashamed that a movie like that came out because it does not represent my people. Not one leader in the Albanian language did that. Not one ambassador went to anybody and said, that's a shame that you did that. Because that is not the Albanian reality. The Albanian reality is a hardworking, diligent, deliberate, integrated, multicultural, multi-ethnic, multi-religious. Uh, we, we're so ingrained in so many communities all over the world and we do it completely symbiotically while maintaining our identity. And, and no one thought it was worth their time or energy to protect that image, as you said. Uh, there are so many things we can complain about here tonight. The only thing I can say about Mac, and I, by the way, in 1997, 8, whenever I first got involved with the Albanian American community, I didn't get involved because I wanted to be involved in politics. I had absolutely no interest in Albanian politics whatsoever, and today I have even less. Um, my anxiety was the same one that proved out as to why NAC did its best work. They were black and white issues. When I looked at that television, I was sitting in my penthouse apartment in New York one night, and I remember looking, and it was like one of those epiphany moments. Looking at the television, watching children with mothers crying, speaking Albanian on the television screen, and I had never seen, I had hoped one day to see Albanian speaking Albanian on American television. I never dreamed a day my dream would come true and it would be worth it. Um, and I said to myself, I gotta do something. I can speak English very well. I understand the American political system. I have some means. I have the talents of, of and ability to communicate. I don't know how to do something, but I got to do something. So I started calling friends. I called Safo. I called Avni. I called a bunch of people. I said, what is it that I can do? I don't even know what I can do, but I need to do something. And that led to a, a lifelong involvement. I've been involved in, not just with NAC, but lots of other organizations. And I will continue to be involved in lots of ways that I think I can be helpful. Um, and uh, I would ask that everybody in this room, because this is a sad reality, if we look at the, the talent that exists in our community in the New York area, and this is what a gathering of a renewed interest for a movement like NAC represents. It's not about the individuals. This is not a political movement. This is not, a, this is not an economic movement. This is not somebody seeking personal gain. Many people in this room could have done that, uh, had many opportunities to do it, but they're fighting for something that's much bigger than money. Much bigger, it's your idea. You know, small people talk about, and I'll repeat it, because small people talk about people. They just pick on each other. That's the level at which our political game is in the Balkans. You know, medium people actually talk about things, events, opportunities, actions. Some of the elite in the region has risen to that. There is almost no war of ideas going on. Nowhere. You don't see it in the universities, because the universities have become a joke. Yeah. Um, you don't see it in the media, because the university, the media is actually completely disincentivized from offering ideas. So therefore, how do you make it happen? How do you get the masses to start demanding better leaders from every local municipality up to the federal level? Because if you don't get that, you're never going to get representation that has any vision about the future. And without the, that representation and vision of the future coming from all of your institutions, NAC can't do its best work. Because NAC has to fight everybody. Yeah. And by the way, there are a lot of NACs in the world. There are NACs in the UK that I've met with. There are NACs in Sweden. There are NACs in Switzerland. There are NACs in all over. And they all have the same problem we have. Today, nobody wants to support a NAC because they don't know what they're fighting for. I mean, what are you going to do in Kosovo? They see a cesspool in Kosovo in terms of what they had dreamed of. Um, they, they're glad that they have an independent country. They're, they, they're glad that people aren't being killed today by Serb tanks rolling through town. They're glad for a lot of things, but far cry from celebrating. Yes, we can celebrate the, the achievements because we, we should do that too, but we're a far cry from the goal. And, and that, I think, is the challenge for our generation. And I don't know today that I have any strategy to articulate, but I can tell you there's a couple of priorities in my mind that I've invested most of my time and energy since the, the war ended in Kosovo. Number one is education. 
If we don't educate our next generation of people to know at least what the hell it is that we're all doing, um, there's no chance that you're going to have a war of ideas coming in from Israel. And number two is we've got to find a free press. And, uh, and in that regard, I've got some ideas as well, but, but there's a lot more work and a much more challenging uh, opportunity. Uh,